Halloween can be a fun time for young and old people alike. For many people, it's their favorite time of year. But for the cognitively impaired, Halloween can present special challenges. My name is Matthew Bell, and I'm with AlzheimersProof.com. Today, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking through some of what those challenges are. A couple of caveats. First of all, there is no substitute for watchfulness. Any of the tips that I might provide are not supposed to be a substitution for diligently and vigilantly watching your loved one. Number two, I am not a lawyer, I am not a doctor, I cannot give you specific advice, I can't give you specific uh, promises that any of the things that we will discuss will prevent uh, injury, and that is why watchfulness is so important. Some of these tips are going to have pros and cons. There's going to be a sense in which, let's say for example, turning off the lights in order to dissuade trick-or-treaters might be an increased risk for tripping inside the home, and it might be an invitation to vandalism or to burglary if it is outside the home in terms of exterior lighting. So you may need to adapt some of these tips for your specific situation. Now there's two main concerns that we're basically going to be thinking through a primary one and then a secondary one. So the primary concern is going to be how Halloween presents dangers for your Alzheimer's afflicted or dementia stricken relative, loved one, friend, whoever it might be. The second is going to be the way in which Halloween and certain people who are cognitively impaired can present special challenges for others. And in particular, we're going to say just a few words about young, young children, trick-or-treaters. The main topic of discussion is going to be how Halloween can present special problems for Alzheimer's and dementia sufferers. This is going to be things like emotional changes, confusion, anxiety, agitation, and the like of this. And as I said, at the very end, we'll discuss how some of these things might also affect young children in particular. So problems for dementia sufferers. Problems for dementia sufferers are going to include things like cognitive difficulties emotional difficulties and physical difficulties. Now, of course, these kinds of difficulties just attend Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, but they're made worse in a holiday like Halloween. And the reason for that is that the way in which Halloween is, of course, celebrated can add to cognitive difficulties like confusion, disorientation. It can exacerbate emotional problems like anxiety and agitation and fear. And it can present certain physical dangers that go in excess of what you would experience in the normal course of the year. These are going to vary, but some of them would be burning hazards from candles, from bonfires, and other things. It could be choking hazards from candy and other kinds of treats that are left out. It could be fall and tripping hazards, and we'll get into some of these in, in a bit. In addition, and unfortunately, there are those people who are looking to take advantage of elderly people, people who are cognitively impaired, people who might be in an early stage or a middle stage and might still live alone part of the time can be particularly victimized. And during a time of year like Halloween, unfortunately, sometimes this can be an occasion for additional crimes against uh, people who are elderly, and in particular those who are cognitively impaired. I'm thinking here of things like assaults, burglaries, on a more serious side, on a less serious side, things like pranks. They can also be subjected to vandalism and scamming attempts. From the standpoint of a person who's cognitively impaired, Halloween can pose a special danger because the cognitively impaired individual may misperceive threats in a couple of different ways. Number one, they may misperceive a person who is really an innocent trick-or-treater as a threat, but secondarily, they might misperceive a person who's actually a threat as not a threat. They might not recognize the level of threat. Now, there's a number of reasons why some of these difficulties are made worse during the holiday of, of Halloween, and a couple of them we'll just run through them. Think about the amount of time the doorbell might ring or there might be a knock on the door. These can be startling at best, and they can actually be panic-inducing at worst. Sometimes that depends on the nature of the affliction and also the area that the person resides in. Trick-or-treaters and others who are in costume might be scary, number one. And number two, they might be difficult to identify, even if they're known to the person. People with Alzheimer's disease are going to react poorly and, and even unpredictably to unfamiliar situations. Masks and other kinds of costume are going to obviously make it difficult to recognize a person, and this is going to increase the level of confusion that might be felt by a person who's got some kind of cognitive impairment. Halloween decorations can range from the grotesque and the off-putting to the downright terrifying. Television and other kinds of movies and programming can be horrifying and extremely scary, especially for young children and, again, those who are cognitively impaired. Remember, hallucinations and even paranoia are a couple of symptoms that attend to dementia normally. 
And that's just independent of, of holidays like Halloween. So Halloween just makes these kinds of things a little bit worse. A couple of reasons for the emotional and uh, cognitive difficulties that are compounded are going to be things like lighting changes. So for example, lights are often turned down low. This dim lighting might make it difficult to perceive and navigate. This can lead to falls and trips. Some lighting might be flickering or strobing, which can also be disoriented. Other changes might include candles and bonfires, which present numerous hazards from burns and house fires to smoke and carbon monoxide in inhalation. And again, as we said, they can also lead to an increased risk for tripping and falling inside the house. Sounds might be loud, they might be eerie, they can be unnerving. Additionally, knives and other paraphernalia may be used to carve pumpkins, might be used to place other decorations up, and these can be dangerous for people who find them who are cognitively impaired. And again, as we said, even candy left out can be a danger not just for overindulgence, but also for actual choking. So what can you do? Let's go through a couple of do's and don'ts. So number one, kind of obvious, hopefully it goes without saying, but don't put your fun over your loved one's well-being. Many people love Halloween and are ready to go all out, but remember, if you're dealing with somebody who's got a cognitive impairment, they may require a special and a particular amount of love and care, especially during a time like this. You may have to sacrifice a few of your decorations and so on in order to uh, provide for them and support them. Don't bring loved ones to disorienting environments, uh, to malls, to parties, to places where there's going to be a lot of boisterousness or a lot of trick-or-treaters, a lot of commotion. Don't leave Alzheimer's sufferers alone. Don't leave carving equipment. Don't alter lighting beyond what would be safe. Now this one's a bit tricky because on the one hand, you're going to want to leave lighting on inside the home for the purpose of helping your loved one to navigate the home environment. But on the other hand, leaving the light on inside can signal to trick-or-treaters that you actually have a house that is worth visiting. So there can be some pressure to turn the lights down low in order to dissuade people from coming up to the home. If you have good window treatments on the outside of the house or on the inside of the house, um, you can turn the lights on inside without having to worry about that light uh, penetrating to the outside. If not, it might be better to retreat to an inner portion of the house where perhaps you can turn those lights on and leave the outermost lights off. If possible, and again with these caveats, don't leave exterior or porch lighting on as it can signal to trick-or-treaters that yours is a house that you might that they might want to approach. Don't over-decorate the house. Don't overstimulate your loved one. And this can even include the opening and the shutting of the doors, again, if you are passing out candy. Don't overwhelm with guests, with parties inside the home or out. A couple of do's now. Do keep a careful watch over your loved one. Do emphasize the lighthearted over the horrifying. Do keep interiors well enough lit for safe passage. You might even consider removing a car from the driveway and placing it into the garage so that the house is not, does not appear to be occupied. Now, as I started off the video by saying some of these tips are going to have some pros and cons, and this is one. If you live in an area where you think that the house would be construed as vacant if it didn't show signs of presence inside, and you think that that might make the home a more of a risk for a burglary attempt, then obviously you're going to want to mitigate some of these. So again, you may have to adapt some of these tips for your own situation. There's also a discussion about whether or not it would be worth to pass out candy or not. Obviously, if it's going to disrupt the evening, if it's going to disturb your Alzheimer's afflicted uh, relative or loved one, then it's probably not a good idea. Some people advise to place a bowl of candy outside and maybe put a sign on that that says, go ahead and take one, don't ring the doorbell. Other people say, no, you shouldn't do that because candy left outside could be tainted or manipulated or stolen or something. You might have to just play it by ear depending on the area that you're in and your level of comfort. You might consider having somebody else pass out candy for you outside and have that person have whatever they need outside so that they don't have to enter and exit the home very often. Do respond to signs of upset. This could be overstimulation or agitation. Some helpful tips are do set up some sort of a safe environment inside the house a safe space, a room that's especially quiet. You do have some quiet activities planned out and ready to go. These could be simple puzzles, a photo album, they could be familiar movies, music, a familiar book, something that you would be able to read to your afflicted relative. Do reassure if necessary, and do remove problematic decorations. You might also consider just not being in the home if you think you're in a high traffic area. Different neighborhoods are different in this regard. Sometimes the neighborhood could be completely quiet and other times it might be extremely filled with activity. 
We hope something that uh, was said today is of value to you, and if it was, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, check back for additional content, which I have planned, and have a happy and safe Halloween.